traditionally is a pretty weak month. In terms of average monthly change, it is in the bottom quarter going back to World War II. If you look at the uh, frequency in which the market rises in month, it is also in the bottom quarter. However, the good th news is that in terms of market declines, it's also among those months with the shallowest declines as well as the lowest level of volatility. So it doesn't really go up very much, but at the same time, it doesn't go down very much either. Historically, if you didn't pay much attention to the market in June or December, um, you wouldn't w really miss too much. Uh, while the market does do quite well in December, it has the lowest level of volatility, so nothing that's going to be jarring you awake. So June and December have pretty low vol volatility, maybe because investors in June are beginning to think about their summer vacations. Well, the energy sector has been the best performer since the near 10% decline that we experienced through the end of September of 2020. It, along with financials, industrials, and materials, have done very, very well since the, uh, the um, recent high. Uh, and I think that's mainly because it's following history. Traditionally, it is those four sectors, energy, financials, industrials, and materials that outperform the market in a rising interest rate environment uh, because they reflect the improving economic outlook combined with the fact that they are inflation hedges. And also because the um, oil delivery around the country has not really improved dramatically since the colonial pipeline shutdown. We have gasoline prices that are very high at this point. And so it's a combination of disruptions as well as expectations of increased demand for energy with the global economy reopening. Clean energy is something that uh, is the focus for the very long term. Uh, but we're not going to stop using fossil fuels uh, in the next three, five, or even 10 years. So uh, there is still profit to be made in the fossil fuels. Uh, and I think right now the question is, has the group gotten ahead of itself? Uh, our energy analysts is a bit concerned that we could see additional supply come on stream. Uh, and as a result, that could end up depressing oil prices. Well, I think the U.S. government would like the other countries around the world to agree to a minimum floor tax of 15 percent, uh, because primarily the U.S. would like to keep a lot of those tax revenues in the United States to help pay for all the stimulus and infrastructure packages that are likely to come down the pike. Um, but I think investors have been a little bit concerned by the prospect of a flat uh, or a minimum tax because several of the sectors in the S&P 500, at least in the fourth quarter, ended up paying below that level. In particular, utilities paid 11% tax rate, whereas you had materials at 13%, technology at 12%, healthcare at only 3%. So those sectors would end up having to pay a lot more in taxes if we abided to our own pledge of a 15% minimum tax. Well, first off, I think it's abiding to the administration's direction where they want to increase spending, but at the same time, uh, they want to keep interest rates, um, well, relatively low. Uh, they wouldn't mind interest rates to rise a little bit to go along with inflation. And history is on their side because the average 10-year yield going back to the early 1950s, believe it or not, is, a, is more than 5%. Uh, at this point, we're trading at about 1.6%, so there's a long way to go just to get back to the average, let alone uh, a level that is substantially higher. Also, the stock market, on average, its monthly returns in those periods in which the uh, yield on the 10-year note has been rising, uh, has been positive up until the 5 to 6 percent threshold beyond which the market tends to slip into negative territory. But I, I think investors can't look at interest rates alone. They have to look at a variety of effects uh, to see whether the market is likely to tumble. But I think that in the next several quarters, we will see interest rates rise, but at a very gradual rate of pace and still be below 2% by the end of 2021. 
I think that it's it's a good thing that Janet Yellen was the Fed chair for quite some time and then is now the secretary uh, of the Treasury uh, because she now understands what it feels like to be in both positions in terms of pressure that is likely to come from the administration in general, from the Treasury Secretary in particular, and also knowing what uh, the Fed can actually do, what its mandate is, and not to go beyond that. So in general, I think it is a positive thing, and probably um, Fed Chair Powell might be more willing to listen to Janet Yellen because he realizes that she knows what he's going through. 